Hey there, guys. It's Kara from Dollar Mommy Club, and I'm so excited to bring this interview to you today um, with Anastasia. She is one of my mentor mentors for blogging and Pinterest and everything, and she has amazing stuff going for her, and I really wanted to share her story with you and um, just kind of learn more about what she does because she definitely helped my traffic, my blogging success take off, um, and I want her to be able to help you as well. So with that, Anastasia, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself a little bit. Hi, Kara. Thank you for this introduction. Now I'm, I'm, I'm going to get shy because you already <laughs> told me there's a lot of amazing stuff going on. Well, I am... Um, I'm blogging since uh, 2017 and um, I started it uh, just to try out because I saw some other bloggers uh, income reports it was very inspiring so I was hoping to get there but I had no idea whatsoever what I was going to do and how I was going to make money with a blog I just wanted to try it and uh, but uh, since I'm I'm usually trying to achieve something when I do something, if I spend my time, I, um, I started thinking about the ways that this could be, become my main income uh, and replace my day job. So there, there you go. Okay, cool. And what were, what were you doing um, before, I guess, you started your whole blogging journey? Like, what was your day job? I was working for about 10 years for digital agencies and it all started with actually with SEO. It was, I was working as an editor and translator uh, in a company, it was an SEO company and we had uh, like a department where we were working on a magazine, online magazine. It was all about SEO stuff. So Google SEO is something that I knew very well and I don't, cannot tell that because I knew so many details about how it works and how people work for clients, I, I wasn't envisioning myself as a blogger to rely heavily on Google, especially when I started in 2017, because I knew it was a lot of competition and it, was, it would be hard with a new site to compete um, in Google. So I started looking for alternatives and then I went to Pinterest, to Pinterest and discovered Pinterest. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's kind of how... Mine was when I started my blog, I was like, oh, I want to start a blog, but I don't know Google and how do I get traffic? So Pinterest was my first kind of go-to yeah. for traffic. Well, cool. Okay. So when you were, I guess, starting your blogging journey, how I know for a lot of, you know, beginner bloggers, new, you know, newbie bloggers, they're wanting to start this blogging journey, but they have no idea what niche to pick. So how did mm -hmm. you come to pick the niche that you are in? Well, it's, first of all, I have to uh, make a disclaimer that I cannot tell what is my niche because I have like a blog about everything. But when I just started out, I, I was just looking at the blogger, uh, blogger income reports and I noticed that the bloggers who make more money, those were the people who sell products usually, or uh, the, they talk about blogging, how to start a blog or how to make money with a blog. So that's what I started writing about initially. And when I picked my domain name, I was so lost just to, to just an illustration how I was lost. I just picked my name and put Anastasia and blogger together <laughs> just to not, because I was so lost in, in this uh, topic. I couldn't pick any niche. And in, in about six months, so I started blogging about blogging and about making money online and was writing this long post and was trying to get them ranked in Google. And uh, can you still, because it was like frozen, no? For a second. Yeah, no, you're okay. good. Uh -huh. and, and I realized that it's so hard to compete in, uh, in Google. So I started looking at Pinterest and, and I also saw that on Pinterest is not, uh, Pinterest cannot bring me as much traffic as I want from in this niche, blogging niche. So then I started experimenting around some holiday topics and, uh, and that was my first viral pins. And so I just started chasing these topics that were possi a possibility for me to get a lot of traffic from Pinterest. And this way, somehow my blog is now separated between blogging stuff, Pinterest stuff, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of my content is about some recipes, holidays, uh, home DIY, um, decor <laughs> okay, split it between the two so what do you um 
I guess, focus on the most? Do you do more of like the how to blogging stuff or do you do more holiday or does it just kind of depend on the time of year, I guess? Um, well, in terms of time, I spend, I think that I spend more time actually uh, writing for, for bloggers and working on my course and supporting students. But then um, the funny thing is that until now, I have most of the income coming from, the, uh, from ads Mm -hmm. I work with Mediavine and most of this income comes to the posts that are not blogging related because oh, more, okay. I get more traffic for these topics that, that are trending and popular on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, in terms of time, I really invest more time in this blogging stuff. But on the other hand, I get more income from, <laughs> from the other, from the other, <laughs> other topics. But it, it's, just, it's just the way maybe I'm investing this time and I hope that in the future maybe it will become more passive. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I know. Yeah. Cause I know like a lot of people and even, um, just in groups like blogging groups, I've talked with a lot of people just struggle on, you know, what niche should I pick it, like go with and, um, and things like that. And for me, it was something I was passionate about. Cause obviously mine's a mom mm -hmm. blog. I write about, you know, parenting and pregnancy and things like that. Cause that's something I love and I'm passionate about. So, I mean, I would say if anyone's struggling to, you know, pick a niche, pick something like that you're passionate about because then you're going to be more, I guess, driven to create content on it and focus on it and be encouraged to do better than if you don't, mm -hmm. if you're just writing about a topic you don't really care about. Um, so that's awesome mm -hmm. that you're able to find a topic that you're really passionate about and have had great success in. Cool. Yeah. So the next one here, what, how do you, balance your kind of blogging and lifestyle that's the other one that mm -hmm. I know a lot of people and especially as a mom I even struggle with it a little bit I'm like holy crap some days I don't do anything on my blog and mm -hmm. because I'm so wrapped up with my kids or the other you know and another day I might be able to crash out a whole blog post and pins um but so how do you do it as well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in a way in a, uh, still in this position like a, someone who just graduated from, from college because I don't have kids yet. I'm married, but we don't have kids yet. So I, and I, I work now full time on the blog. So while well, I manage my time, that really, I think it's really a bad way of managing my time because I work more than, I think, more than 12 hours per day. I mean, I have, I have breaks, of course, because I, I make lunches and dinners at home. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, uh, the rest of the time, I, th I find myself, most of the time I'm working, sometimes I meet friends, but um, I, I would say that I have like a five, five day fully works of work, okay. working week. And then on the weekend, I'm working a little bit less, less hours because we, we go to the beach, we, we live in Portugal, so we have beaches oh. here nearby. <laughs> so yeah, and um, I think that, still even though i it's just like my choice i could i could do less hours maybe i would do a little bit maybe my income wouldn't grow that fast as, as i wanted if i um, worked less hours but i like the freedom that i can go whenever i need i can i can make a doctor's appointment and i don't need to ask anyone to give me permission and uh, if i need to meet my friends in the middle of the working week i can do it as well mm -hmm. so it's just like, it's a matter of choice um, for me now. But I think that this, the blogging will help me a lot if I, if I, we have a bigger family, it will help me a lot uh, yeah. managing my time. It would be much easier when you have kids than compared to a nine, nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> now, were you working, when you started, were, when you started your blog, were you still working your other nine to five job? Yeah, it was really hard. The first year was really hard because I was working uh, nine to five and then in the evenings and almost all the weekends I was working on, on the blog. And so I was just dreaming about this first Mediavine income that was, it was the big, it was the biggest one because the, before that I was relying on affiliate income and it's very unsustainable. With Mediavine it started like I hit the, the, the first month it was fifteen hundred dollars and here in Portugal salaries are not high maybe you know and uh, so for the for the US I probably wouldn't 
quit my job when I got the first $1,500 from the blog. But since here, my salary wasn't that much higher. <laughs> so oh. it was for me already from the first month, I was like, okay, bye-bye. You're like, this is working, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Okay, cool. So how long after you started your blog were you able to quit your nine to five? It was at the end of the first year. I think okay. the 11th or 12th month, I already had to inform my company that I'm going to leave. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I know um, media, because I'm on media brand as well, and that is a big income driver for me. And anyone starting on a blog, set that really as a goal because it is like mm -hmm. Anastasia said, it is more uh, sustainable. It's something you can rely on because it's monthly. It's not like affiliate sales where you don't know if you're going to, if someone's going to click your link and buy something yeah. through it. Um, Mediavine is definitely more, I would say consistent as well. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely rely, we're like, okay, well, where are we going to be this month? How is it going to hit? But that's awesome. Yeah. It does take about, I mean, for you, it took about a year. I'm mm -hmm. still working a nine to five. For, I mean, I've, when I decided to stay home after we had our first um, baby, and so I was not wanting to go back to a job after having her, and so that was my motivator and kind of okay. drive, but I didn't make my first full-time income till a year after starting my blog. So, I mean, for anyone starting, that's kind of like a time frame you might be looking for, because I know a lot of people are like, man, I want to start a blog can I quit my job in three months, six months? And it's like, well, if you really want it, maybe you could. Um, but balancing life out, like realistically, I would say give yourself a year um, to really start seeing a good amount of income starting to generate and coming in towards you. So that's awesome. Um, the next one here is what, well, we kind of already covered it. You were doing your nine to five before um, mm -hmm. you were blogging. Um, and then you went into your blogging. So if you were to start things all over again, yeah. and with the knowledge you have now, what would you do different? Yeah, yeah, I touched on it a little bit. So I, would, I wouldn't I uh, would write that much about blogging as a beginner because I was trying immediately to get into the league of these big bloggers that are teaching others. And I didn't have experience myself yet. I didn't have any achievements and results to show people. So if anyone even landed on my one of my posts, they would just read through it and they wouldn't be inspired because there's nothing for me to show and they wouldn't trust me as an authority. So I was just writing this for no one. And only after I started getting a consistent traffic and income from based on Pinterest traffic, I could finally write something that people would believe in. I could make screenshots, make my media buying income reports. And so um, from that point, it was worth it writing this content. So if I went back, I wouldn't just waste the first six months writing about how, how am I an expert blogger when I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that's really good. That's one. Well, and that's why it took me, because I wanted to start a blog even before I had kids and I wanted to do it on parenting, but I was like, I am not a parent myself at that time. So mm -hmm. I don't, I can't write a blog that talks about how to cope with morning sickness during pregnancy mm -hmm. if I haven't been through it myself. So that was one thing that held me back a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. too, was that I just didn't have the experience yet until I actually became a mom and then went through it all. But um, cool. Yeah. For like, if you're looking to start something, start, Cause like I not even like I'll teach some people on the side of what I know and what helped me grow my account. But like, I didn't even start doing that until I had results for my own self and my own things that I did. And I think that's one of the biggest things um, that you could do is start, start somewhere where you've already had the experience. Like if you are a master crocheter, like whip yeah. out a blog about how to become a master crocheter because you obviously yeah. have that experience. And I think then again, that's going to be something more motivating for you to write about because it's a topic and something that you love to do. Mm -hmm. um, well, cool. Let's go to the next one here. Um, now, um, if do you have a course? I know you have a course because I've yeah. been through it. Yes. So why don't you go ahead and tell everyone a little bit about this amazing course that you have? Yeah. So um, I really wanted to help people with Pinterest because I saw that there, there were some even established bloggers who relied heavily on Google and some were very big on Instagram. But 
I, I saw that they have almost non-existent Pinterest profile. So I, I, I saw that there is a niche and there are people who need help with Pinterest. And since I started, like I mastered this viral pins for myself and I thought that's, that's the way to go to, to share this uh, with people. And I made the course, uh, it's more focused on, on Pinterest SEO uh, than, r rather than Pinterest marketing in general. I would say that it's really focused on the SEO side, maybe it, it because, it's because I have this Google SEO background for 10 years. <laughs> so I was focused more on SEO. But I, ha I think it helps with virality of pins as well. When your pins are really targeting a keyword, then Pinterest starts showing it to the right people. So these right people are going to save. They're not just, just going to scroll uh, through your pin. So oh, that's, cool. that's, the, that's, the, <laughs> that's the course I'm in. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. And guys, really, this course is fantastic. I took it um, when I set up my first Pinterest account and then Pinterest accidentally shut it down. So I was like, great, I just, now I got to start all over again. And at that time when my Pinterest account got shut down, mm -hmm. um, I took Anastasia's course and it really just helped just launch it back up again. Um, now I was still getting some traffic from even when my account was shut down just because I already had a lot of pins on Pinterest. Um, and so that did help a little bit jumpstart that second account. But even as a fresh person on Pinterest, you're not getting a lot of traffic from it or you want to learn how to get more. I definitely recommend taking her course because it really mm -hmm did help jumpstart that. And, um, she does talk a lot about just helping your pins go viral, which was one thing I was really wanting to focus on. I was like, okay, how can I get my pins to go viral, stay viral a little bit longer, but not only that, but to get clicks. Cause my old account, I was getting a lot of saves, but not a lot of clicks. And so now with my new account, a lot of my, I might not be getting as many saves, but I'm getting a lot more clicks, which is more important <laughs> for me because then that's traffic going to my site instead of people just saving my pin. So I definitely recommend that you check it out. And um, if you do, I do have the links in the descriptions below. So feel free to um, check out her stuff because it's really amazing. Um, now the last kind of, I guess, wrap up this, um, I know it's kind of just a short interview here, but for any new bloggers or anything out there, what are some, what are three pieces of advice that you can give to um, beginner bloggers? Okay. So I think that the first advice would be to have the right expectations for the first period, short term expectations. We already touched on it, that a lot of people are expecting to quit their job in two or three months or to, rep to make like six figure yeah. income. Uh, <laughs> But it's not, unfortunately, it doesn't happen. So the short-term expectations, they shouldn't be like, you have this number in your head, but just be prepared to work for it mm -hmm. for at least maybe a year. And then um, another piece of advice that would be never give up because I see a lot of people start a blog and by the end of the first year, they're almost there because all the blogs, they need time in any platform. Even though we, I, I, can, I claim it um, with authority that Pinterest takes not as much time as Google to understand your site and to start bringing you traffic, but still even Pinterest needs time. So you need, shouldn't expect in the first months or two months that you will start, get, uh, get, uh, start getting a ton of traffic. Yeah. Um, but don't give up at the end of the first year and don't give up when you see that maybe there is some stagnation um, it could be seasonal, it could be just because you didn't, uh, maybe your niche is uh, something happening with your niche, you need to also analyze. Because when I, when I just started uh, trending on Pinterest, I've got this uh, keto topic, and I've got, I, I've got at the very beginning of this topic, when, when everyone is just starting looking at it, and I got a lot, a lot of traffic in the first maybe two or three months since I started posting about keto. And then what happened is that everyone started having it and it became oversaturated. So I, I in about one year, I had to look at other topics. And it, well, it could be time for me to give up, but <laughs> it's not my story. So I just started looking at other topics to, to substitute that, um, to replace that traffic. Oh, okay. uh, and, and the last uh, advice would be probably just don't expect too little. Don't, don't expect too little in the long, t uh, in the long run. From blogging because you never know what where your blog can can go it can become your uh, 
dream career. Uh, maybe you, you couldn't even think about such such an income uh, at your day job. At least for me here in Portugal, I would never make as much money as I'm making now with with a blog. And I've been just doing it for two years. So. Um, in the future, I, I hope to, to make it even more, uh, grow it even bigger. And uh, so, when I, no I noticed that a lot of bloggers, when they reach this this first uh, income um, that they were dreaming about, they kind of give up. They they stop looking for new ideas. Uh, they don't think about other ways of making money because they kind of they get this traffic and they monetize it with ads and they just stay at the same level and. This can be this can be actually dangerous because people, um, like I said, that, that can be seasonal. Uh, that, that can be the topic can become such saturated. Something can happen with your traffic, but when when you have this traffic, you need to start leveraging it with products. You need to start learning other new stuff that you, as a beginner blogger, you just learned about SEO and how to write the text, but then you need to start learning other stuff like how to create products, how to sell them, how to email your people, how to make a tribe of these people. Yeah, I think that's great <laughs> advice. Right there, guys, she just gave you three amazing golden nuggets. <laughs> and it's totally true, as a beginning blogger, I mean, I would personally say even start simple, start focusing, you know, like Anastasia said, on the SEO, how to get traffic, and then as you continue to grow, continue to progress. I mean, my first goal when I was first starting blogging, I was like, my goal as a beginning blogger, I want to make $10 every single day. Like that was my goal as a beginner mm -hmm. blogger. And then I went to $50 and now it's up to $100 and then it just continues to grow. But even though from one source, I'm able to make a full-time income, I'm not like, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to explore mm -hmm. ever other avenues because it's really true. Like you can like one thing that you can do is like if you rely too much on one source and that source goes away, boom, That's your risky. blog's gone, your traffic's gone, your income's gone. <laughs> and um, so you definitely want to explore other avenues of generating, you know, income to your blog so that if one, you know, one source of your income does happen to slow down, you still have other ones to rely on. Um, and so those are all great pieces of advice and i'm so happy again to i was i will to interview you and have you on here you. um again guys go check out our course go check out our blog um it's anastasiablogger.com and um just give a look see at our stuff because it's really great and it's really helped me and i just wanted to help you guys as well um so with that being said i hope you guys enjoy this video and we'll catch you on the next one mm -hmm. bye bye, -bye.